guys! Welcome to Historical Gossip. In this channel, we do what humans have done best since we've evolved to be a super aware being. Gossiping! Today, we take a step into the Western world in an era that may seem distant from our contemporary society, but played a significant role in shaping our present. It becomes imperative to stop and ask the following question. What occurred during periods of illegal abortion? Did the liberalisation of abortion laws in some countries nowadays result from the decline of modern societal values? This video provides answers and insights to help us learn from the past for a better future. The historical record demonstrates that women have practiced abortion throughout history, both when it was legal and when it was prohibited. Centuries before the advent of Christianity, various methods were employed to terminate unwanted pregnancies, including the use of medicinal herbs, pointed instruments, massages, and strenuous physical exercises. These techniques, while passed down through generations, varied in safety and effectiveness. During the times of ancient Greece and Rome, abortion was a common and socially accepted practice, provided the woman had her husband's consent. However, in the Middle Ages, the majority of Christian churches condemned abortion, although they made a crucial distinction between aborting an animated fetus, one that had started moving in the womb and one not yet animated, the animation of the fetus was often the only way to determine definitively that a pregnancy was in progress in an era prior to ultrasound technology. Consequently, terminating a pregnancy before feeling fetal movement was considered less serious than doing so afterward. The concept of distinguishing between animated and non-animated fetuses had its roots in Greek and Jewish thought too particularly Aristotle's belief that during fetal development, three distinct souls appeared in progression. The vegetable soul, the animal soul, and finally, the rational soul. Aristotle permitted abortion until the fetus acquired the animal soul, as that's when signs of life and sensation became apparent. Moreover, Aristotle believed that males acquired the animal soul at 40 days of gestation, while females did so at 90 days. These beliefs during the Middle Ages influenced Christian theologians to assert that women had lower intelligence compared to men. In alignment with these beliefs in the 19th century, Christian thought held that abortion was a sin but constituted murder only after the animation of the fetus. However, this raised the question of whether it should have been possible to determine the baby's sex before birth based on the timing of animation. The legal view on abortion varied by country and was influenced by Christian dogma, resulting in different penalties for terminating pregnancies before or after fetal animation. For instance, England only punished abortion after animation, while Southern Europe imposed penalties that could extend to death for both the woman seeking an abortion and those assisting her. In some unusual historical instances, the penalty for abortion involved public humiliation or wearing special clothing to identify those associated with abortion, like a specific coloured garment or symbol. The criminalisation of abortion in the 19th century did not eliminate the practice, but led to clandestine dangerous abortions and various methods to induce miscarriage. In cities, some illegal abortion providers charged high fees, and didn't care much about safety, putting women's health at risk. Other methods included herbal remedies at home surgical procedures and the use of substances like lead to poison the fetus. One shocking clandestine abortion technique worth mentioning from the 17th century involved the use of a so-called abortion spoon or birthing spoon. These were elongated slender instruments with a scoop-like end that women would insert into their cervix in an attempt to induce a miscarriage. The idea was to manipulate or puncture the amniotic sac, which would theoretically trigger a miscarriage. However, this method was highly dangerous, often causing severe injuries or infections and, in some cases, proving fatal to both the mother and the fetus. 
women sought abortions primarily because of financial challenges associated with child-rearing economic limitations and their desire to manage the size of their families, in the early 19th century, the United States started forming abortion laws, initially using quickening when a mother felt her baby kick as a legal marker, but in the mid-19th century, the American Medical Association pushed to criminalise all abortions, shifting the focus to conception. Their goals included eliminating untrained providers, addressing declining birth rates and limiting female independence. In the 20th century, liberalising abortion laws gained traction due to feminist activism and growing awareness of the dangers of limiting access to safe abortion. This led to the legalisation of abortion in the United States in 1973 through a Supreme Court decision. As of the 21st century, the legalisation of abortion has made progress in numerous countries, especially in the Western society. However, debates continue as some countries, influenced by cultural, religious or political reasons, prohibit or limit abortion access. As of September 1st, 2023, several US states have implemented strict abortion restrictions. Indiana and North Dakota have total abortion bans, while South Carolina enforces a six-week ban and North Carolina and Nebraska have 12-week bans. Legal challenges have blocked bans in Iowa, Utah and Wyoming. Montana protects abortion rights, preventing a ban from taking effect. Since the US Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade in June 2022, abortion laws have changed. Michigan secured abortion rights through an amendment, and South Carolina's six-week ban was struck down. This reduces the number of states with abortion bans from 26 to 24. In these states, millions face restricted abortion access, requiring travel or unsafe alternatives. Twelve states have near total bans, two lack abortion clinics, and four have gestational age bans. Approximately 25 million women undergo unsafe abortion procedures annually, resulting in around 78,000 deaths each year due to illegal and unsafe methods. These stark figures highlight the urgent need for safe and accessible abortion services to protect women's lives and well-being, emphasising the importance of reproductive rights and healthcare access. And you guys, what are your thoughts on the direction society should take regarding abortion rights nowadays? 